students today uh, i would like to take a class on the pied beauty by gm hopkins the pied beauty is actually regarded a cartel sonnet and it is a remarkable devotional or religious poem in this poem hopkins had attempted to glorify almighty to give tribute to pay tribute to almighty for his colorful beauty and from the title of the poem it is clear to all of you that the poet uh, fo focuses on the contrasting colorful beauty created by almighty in this particular very much short poem though this poem is a short one but definitely it is very much weighty in terms of its representation in terms of its meaning in terms of its glorification of the almighty so actually uh, here you will find a quotation from uh, hopkins your personal boundaries protect the inner core of your identity and your right to choices so uh, human beings are created with the personal boundaries and the, 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 those personal boundaries are the reflections of the identity of human beings so if we look at the biography of the poet we will find that the poet was born in 1844 on 28 july and died on 8 june 1889 aged only at uh, aged only 44 that is he died at the age of only 44 and within this short span of lifetime he attempted to compose many poems most of the poems are actually religious poems and he was uh, a british citizen by nationality and he belonged to roman catholic he uh, was also educated from uh, heathrow college london uh, belol is college oxford so if we look at the major contributions of hopkins then we will find that he had Uh, composed many poems uh, but his first work was published in 1918 uh, during the victorian period uh, if we mention some of his remarkable poems then we will find that binse poplars uh, is one of his uh, remarkable poem poems another one which is discussed today is the pied beauty the uh, wind hover to jesus christ our lord is another poem written by gm hopkins so uh, if we look at the you know literary or historical contemporaries of uh, gm hopkins we will find some poets uh, robert breezes uh, is one of the contemporary poets of hopkins uh, charles darwin though he was not a poet he was uh, you know a scientist who had composed the origin of species was also the contemporary uh, you know figure uh, historical figure of hopkins uh, john fowler william morris another remarkable poet was the contemporary of gm uh, hopkins and christiana rossetti uh, is another uh, you know uh, contemporary poet poet of gm hopkins so if we Uh, look at the interesting fact then we will find that his uh, his nickname was actually uh, given in the school skin and he was uh, schooled in his home uh, up till the age of 10 and many other things that are very much interesting uh, uh, to hopkins actually so now we will come to the main points the main focus of the poem you know if we talk about the background of the poem then we will find that pied beauty is a cartel sonnet and it was written in 1877 but published in uh, 1918 and uh, it, it was included as a part of the collection poems of gm hopkins uh, gm hopkins converted to catholicism uh, in 1866 and went on to become a jesuit priest and teacher he wrote poems as a young man but burnt most of them when he was his calling came he it was only in 1875 that he returned to verse uh, you know at the uh, in the year 1875 uh, 
Jim Hopkins returned to the composition of verse composition of poetry, Pied Beauty written in the summer and was inspired by the Welsh countryside scenario and uh, he uh, tried to focus on that extraordinary beauty uh, in this poem, The Pied Beauty. So if we look at the poem, this poem is not a very long one. So if we uh, recite the poem, then we will find uh, glory be to God for dappled things, for skies of couple color as a brinded cow, for rose moles all in stipple, open trout that swim, fresh fire coal, chestnut falls, finches, wings, landscape plotted and pieced, fold, fallow and plow, and all traits their gear and tackle and trim, all things counter original, spare, strange, whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how, with swift, slow, sweet, so agile, dame, he furthers forth, whose beauty is past change, praise him. So if we look at the synopsis of the poem, then we will find that Pied Beauty is reduced from of the sonnet and therefore it is known as a cartel sonnet. It is, uh, it is in the reduced form of the sonnet. It is, it is not written in 14 lines and that is why it is called a cartel sonnet. And you know uh, in this sonnet the poet had attempted to give a glorification or glory to Almighty for his extraordinary creation. The poem focuses on things in nature because the poem is based on the natural phenomenon for giving glorification, for uh, glorifying Almighty's extraordinary creations in the nature. Uh, the poet looks around the nature and he, he found, uh, he has found uh, extraordinary, uh, you know, phenomenon uh, in the midst of the nature which was created by Almighty. And that is, you know, the reflection in the poem. He also describes how falling chestnuts resembles coast burn, you know, bursting in a fire because of the way in, in which the chestnuts reddish brown meat is exposed when the shells break against the back, you know, against the ground. The narrator then moves to an image of the landscape. So we, you know, we will find, you know, images, imagery to be used in the poem. Uh, to uh, reflect the beauty of Almighty in the poem. And in the end of the poem, the narrator emphasizes that all the things in the midst of nature are subject to change, but only Almighty is past change. And as all the beautiful, th beautiful things are extraordinary, the Almighty, who is the creator of these beautiful things, are definitely unparalleled beauty and who is not subject to any sort of change. So if we look at the structure of the poem, then the first thing that had already been repeatedly uh, reflected here that this sonnet is a cartel sonnet because this sonnet uh, had not followed the traditional 14 lines pattern here. And you know, the Pied Beauty is a special sonnet cons consisting of a state plus, uh, you know, the content, uh, the last line of which is shortened. The rhyme scheme A, B, C, A, B, C, D, B, C, D, C. This is the, uh, you know, structure of the poem here. If you look to the, the poem carefully, then you will find this rhyme scheme reflected or present in the poem. And, you know, uh, there is the musical repetition of the sounds throughout the poem. Dapple, stipple, tackle, fickle, freckled, adagile. These are the examples that the poet has used different type of words to focus on a sort of musical sound which is also a, a special characteristics of this poem. So if we uh, try to find out the message of the poem then we will find from the very beginning to the end of the poem that the, the poet is giving a greater glory of Almighty, greater, greater glory to Almighty and he uh, would like to praise Almighty always 
because god is not subject to any sort of change god is ever beautiful as the creations of god are beautiful definitely the master of this creations the almighty is unparalleled beauty i think if you try to follow my lecture you will understand the theme or the subject matter of this poem as well as the structure of this poem thanks to all of you for your patient hearing